Hello everyone, this video is in continuation to our videos on genetics. In our previous video, we had discussed about sex-linked inheritance. We discussed about X-linked and Y-linked disorders. In this video, we'll talk about the mono-hybrid cross. Now, this video is relevant for ICSC and CBSC both. But yes, of course, for CBSC, I'll be making a separate video because they have some extra or, you know, different uh, things about it. But yes, uh, we are focusing here on ICSC 23-24, but CBSC also it's helpful. Let's talk about monohybrid cross first. What is a monohybrid cross? Let's understand the history behind it first and then we will make it. Now before we start with this, let's understand that who gave or who um, made this cross. This cross was made by Gregor Mendel. Why was it made by Mendel? Because um, after his studies on the plants, uh, you know, uh, pea plant basically. He took pea plant for his study because of certain characteristics that pea plant had a longer lifespan, it could survive, you know, for um, six months and then new plant was grown, so he could study many generations. Then there were multiple characteristics of the pea plant which he could study. So he studied seven characteristics, or in seven characteristics ko study karne ke baad, he came to a conclusion and he gave three laws law of dominance. law of segregation and law of independent assortment. Now, he was a mathematician basically, so he was not satisfied by just giving the laws. In order to prove his laws, he gave two mathematical expressions. These two laws, law of dominance and segregation, were explained by the monohybrid cross, whereas the last law, that is law of independent expression, uh, law of independent assortment, was explained by a dihybrid cross. We'll focus on monohybrid cross here. That means we'll focus on the cross which is responsible for explaining law of dominance and segregation in this video and in our next video we'll talk about the dihybrid cross now let's understand how this question comes in the paper now whenever you have a question read the statement properly and then first of all understand whether the question is asking for a monohybrid or a dihybrid cross suppose the question says what are the offsprings formed when I'll take a very simple example when a tall pea plant is crossed with a short pea plant now when the statement reads only one characteristic as in a tall pea plant is crossed with a short pea plant it's only one characteristic they are only talking about the height of the plant so when you read the statement and you understand that they are only talking about one characteristic feature you should know that it's a mono hybrid cross now let's understand how we make a monohybrid cross. So this is the question which we have got and now we need to write the answer for this. So let's write an answer for it. So when I say you write an answer for this, what do you write first? A tall pea plant with a short pea plant, there is a box, there is a table given in your book which says what are the dominant characteristics given by Mendel and what are the recessive characteristics. First of all, the characters are given, then dominant and recessive. This is a table in your book which states seven characteristics that is the height of the plant, um, position of the flower, color of the flower, then uh, pea pods ka, uh, shape and then shape of the seeds, uh, color of the seeds uh, and uh, appearance of the flower where terminal or axil. So these are seven characteristics which are given in that box and then he has mentioned which are dominant and which are recessive. So according to that table, height, tallness of a pea plant is a dominant trait and shortness of a pea plant is a recessive trait. Now, before we start the cross, let's understand a few things first. I'll write it here. First thing is, first, uh, you know, there are certain rules to make the monohybrid cross or a dihybrid cross. The first rule is that 
characters are expressed with one alphabet that means i'll give you an example that means if they say that plant is tall and short yahi bola na that tall is crossed with short so if we write t for tall we will not write s for short we will write small t for short why have we written that is the second rule so we are just using one alphabet it can be a b c d any alphabet but we are using tall because t is there we can use s also capital s small s bhi likh sakte hain next is next rule is that a dominant trait is written as capital alphabet that is why we have written tallness as capital t and short as small t because short is a recessive trait according to mendel fine so a dominant trait will always be written in capital and a recessive trait will always be written in a short letter we know dominant and recessive this has been covered in the definitions which we did in the first video of genetics i'll tell you again a dominant trait is the one which is expressed as in agar suppose mai aise rough i'll just make if suppose this is a plant iske andar tall hone ke traits bhi hain short hone ke traits bhi hain बट एक प्लांट टॉल भी और शॉर्ट भी दोनों नहीं हो सकता ना सो ओनली वन एक्सप्रेस इज सो अगर टॉल एक्सप्रेस हो रहा है सो टॉल इज अ डोमिनेंट ट्रेट फाइन और जो शॉर्ट है वो कभी भी टॉल के वो एक्सप्लेन फर्दर बट हमेशा याद रखो कि डोमिनेंट ट्रेट वो वाला ट्रेट है विच इज एक्सप्रेस एंड द रिसेसिव ट्रेट इज द वन विच इज नॉट एक्सप्रेस आई हैव एक्सप्लेन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अलील ऑल्सो इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियो आप वो देखोगे आपको बहुत अच्छे से क्लियर हो जाएगा थर्ड रूल इज as the chromosomes are always present in pairs and we are de demonstrating chromosomes here so we write traits in pairs as in if we are write thing tall and short so how do we follow all the rules tall will be is a dominant so expressed is a as a capital short is recessive so expressed as a uh, uh, lower case tall as is a uh, you know it's present in pairs so two will be written short as is present in pairs two will be written fine so this is how we express each plant so it says that a tall plant is crossed with a short plant so we have to write it like this and underneath this we'll write tall plant and we'll write short plant next crossing is the same as we did previously for um, male and female chromosomes let's see again we make a punnett square one trait here and the another one is written here let's see what do we get here in acha one more thing i want to tell you this is not something which we do this is something which mendel has already done so we can't make any amendments this is just like a derivation which is already being given fine so let's see mendel what did he do he crossed a tall plant with a short plant and this is the result which we which he got that all the plants were tall here in this result which he got he called it first generation or f stands for filial so it is first filial generation so to his surprise he found that all the plants which were which appeared in the first generation were tall now he gave his first law law of dominance which states that in the presence when two alleles are present in the presence of a dominant allele the recessive can never express itself even if this small t is present it can't express itself this is first law of dominance so here in this uh, the, you know in this step he has explained that the in the presence of a dominant uh, trait recessive cannot express itself fine and then the second law is also explained how second law is law of segregation which says that during gamete formation the pair has to separate or segregate from each other these are gametes 
विच आर फ्यूजिंग गेमीट से फ्यूज करते हैं ना सो दीज आर गेमीट विच आर फ्यूजिंग सो इन फॉर द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द गेमीट द पेरेंट प्लांट और पेरेंट रेट हैज टू सेपरेट मतलब वी कैन राइट इन पेयर कई बच्चे ये गलती करते हैं यहां पर लिख देंगे टी टी और यहां लिखेंगे टी टी और स्मॉल टी स्मॉल फिर क्रॉस ऐसे नहीं होता दे आर सेपरेटेड दिस इज लॉ ऑफ सेग्रीगेशन दे आर सेपरेटेड और सेग्रीगेटेड फ्रॉम द अनदर टी इनको हम खोल के लिखेंगे मतलब एक पेयर नहीं लिखेंगे अलग अलग लिखेंगे दिस इज लॉ ऑफ सेग्रीगेशन दैट ड्यूरिंग द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ गेमीट्स द पेयर इट सेपरेट और सेग्रीगेट फ्रॉम ईच अदर न दिस इज एफ वन जनरेशन अब यहां मेंडल स्टॉप नहीं हुआ ही वॉन्टेड टू सी सम चेंज सो वट डिड आई डू ही स्टार्टेड फॉर द नेक्स्ट एफ टू जनरेशन सो वट डिड ही डू ही क्रॉस्ड टू रिजल्ट मतलब उसने क्या किया जो उसके पास रिजल्ट आया दिस वॉज द रिजल्ट विच ही गॉड आउट ऑफ दीज ही क्रॉस्ड एनी टू पी प्लांट्स इट वॉज कॉल्ड सेल्फिंग सो ही परफॉर्म सेल्फिंग आप अगेन द सेम थिंग वन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ट्रेड अनादर विल बी रिटर्न हियर एंड वॉट डू वी गेट Here he saw a change. What was the change? Let's take them out from the box and write. The result which he got was this. So you write it in your notebook and see what result did you get. Let's see if it matches with mine or not. So this plant is tall. Both of them are again tall, and this one is short. Why is short? Think the answer. I am giving the answer. Why is it short? Because there is no capital T present, so nothing to express. So how do we say a recessive trait is always expressed when both the recessive alleles are present? Dominant is not present. So in the absence of a dominant allele, the expression can be a recessive one. Now, after we do this, there are two types of ratios which were given by Mendel. Let's write those. I'll write it here. One is a phenotypic ratio. Another one is a genotypic ratio. When I say a phenotypic ratio, that means the observable traits, as in which can be seen. We can see that three plants are tall. It is clearly visible that three of the plants they are tall. Fine. So. वट इज द रेशो फिनोटिपिक रेशो क्या बनेगी यहां पर दैट इज थ्री इज टू वन थ्री प्लांट आर टॉल एंड वन प्लांट इज शॉर्ट वेन आई से जीनोटिपिक रेशो इट मीन हाउ द जीन्स आर अरेन्ज हाउ आर दे अरेन्ज लेस सी सो वेन वी सी द कॉम्बिनेशन वन ऑफ देम इज होमोजाइगस डॉमिनेट दिस If you want to understand the definitions, please go back to the video which says definitions of genetics. Just me, sab explained hai. So one is homozygous dominant, two are heterozygous dominant. Again, why? Because in the presence of a capital, small cannot express. So two are heterozygous dominant, and one is homozygous recessive. So the ratio, a genotypic ratio, comes out to be. One is to two is to one. One is homozygous dominant. Two are heterozygous dominant, and one is homozygous recessive. So this is how the ratios are also given: phenotypic and genotypic ratio. Whenever you make a monohybrid cross, this ratio should remain the same. If this ratio is wrong, your answer is wrong. If you do not do, if you do not come to this conclusion, your answer is wrong. This is the result. What do we call? What did he call this? This is F two generation or second filial generation, which was given by Mendel. After giving second filial generation, he came to a conclusion of genotypic and phenotypic ratios. It is fixed. आप कोई भी मोनोहाइब्रिड क्रॉस करोगे उसका फिनोटिपिक रेशो इज थ्री इज टू वन जीनोटिपिक इज वन इज टू टू इज टू वन इट कम्स एज अ वन मार्क क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो राइट द फिनोटिपिक रेशो ऑफ अ मोनोहाइब्रिड क्रॉस थ्री इज टू वन राइट द जीनोटिपिक रेशो ऑफ अ मोनोहाइब्रिड क्रॉस वन इज टू टू इज टू वन इट इज फिक्सड Fine. So here in in this video, I have in detail explained you how a monohybrid cross is formed. Please try making monohybrid crosses. I am again giving you a question as a homework. Let's write. Please write it down and give the answer. You can uh, uh, do it. Click a picture. Write. Post it in the comments if you want. So the question is, what are the offspring's when? a um mm, when a plant 
और पी प्लांट आई मैं अगर प्लांट बोला तो पी ही है वेन अ पी प्लांट विथ वॉयलेट फ्लावर्स इज क्रॉस्ड विद अ पी प्लांट विथ वाइट फ्लावर्स नाउ इन ऑर्डर टू नो वॉट इज डॉमिनेट एंड रिसेसिव यू हैव टू सी दैट शॉर्ट विच इज देयर इन योर बुक आई गिव यू वन मोर क्वेश्चन just to make you occupied so that you do some homework also again offsprings formed when when a pea plant with um green colored seeds is crossed with a plant with Yellow colored seeds. Now this is tricky. आप जब इसका आंसर निकालोगे आपको खुद पता लग जाएगा ट्रिकी क्यों है इसको स्पेसिफिकली प्लीज चेक द चार्ट एंड देन डू सो हेर इन इन दिस वीडियो वी हैव कंप्लीटली डन द मोनो हाइब्रोट्रॉस इन अवर नेक्स्ट वीडियो विल टॉक अबाउट अ डाई हाइब्रोट्रॉस सो कीप वॉचिंग लाइकिंग शेयरिंग सब्सक्राइबिंग थैंक यू